and your timer starts now. Ooh, okay. So hi, uh, good afternoon everybody, uh, and thanks Jama for doing that uh, wake up call. Uh, a lot of what I have to say is uh, based upon what I have uh, seen in the industry, what I have gone through, uh, what I think uh, the struggles are uh, based upon meeting with clients uh, in our consulting business. Uh, and uh, there, there, there's been a lot that's been talked about, uh, you know, uh, reimagining testing 3.0. Uh, we've talked about uh, pricing models, we've talked about service delivery optimization, we've talked a lot about uh, uh, different ways of innovatively automating, etc. Uh, and I'm sure, uh, uh, you know, uh, Vikas and uh, the others will also talk about some of the service delivery models. Uh, one of the things that I believe, uh, uh, and, and my experience now has has kind of firmed that uh, belief still further, uh, is the fact that uh, uh, to a large extent we forget about capability enhancements. Uh, it, it, you know, we, as large organizations or as small organizations, when we take people in, uh, we believe that uh, training them in the initial days of testing is good. Uh, after that, uh, you know, it's survival of the fittest. It, it basically, how you get to be a test lead, how do you get to be a test manager, how do you get to be a leader in the industry, uh, how do you coach and mentor somebody to take those leadership positions uh, is extremely, uh, you know, left to chance, uh, is extremely dependent upon individual capabilities. Uh, hopefully you can see that, uh, and hopefully the backbenchers can hear me. Uh, okay, good, thanks. Uh, one of the things that uh, we see today as far as organizations are concerned, uh, and this is whether large, small, medium, everything, okay? Uh, we see lots of diverse skills and competencies in the sense that you have people with automation experience, you have people with domain experience, you have people with business experience uh, or business process experience, you have people with performance test experience, security test experience, etc., cetera, uh, which is good in a way, uh, and I'll come down to thinking, telling you about why I think that sometimes this division in labor causes more friction than from a customer's perspective. Uh, there is a clear division of responsibilities. You have a tester, you have a team lead, you have a test manager, and somebody who's a team lead doesn't want to be a tester, somebody who's a test manager wants only to manage and would not potentially sometimes roll up their sleeves and get to work, uh, if you will. Uh, organizations currently have the ability to scale. That means, uh, as uh, Syed was saying yesterday, for those who attended that session, uh, very interesting insights. Uh, you could uh, take somebody from being a X, turn him into a Y, put him in front of your customer, and voila, you've got a new engagement going off the ground. Uh, and, and scale gets established that way, okay? Uh, organizations have uh, innovation bubbles, and by this I mean that you have pools of expertise uh, you have specific uh, uh, areas of focus, and again, uh, you know, you can dive deep down vertically, uh, you can go horizontally across the domain, et cetera. Uh, what it essentially then means is that uh, you, you know, to, to get something tested, you need about four people to do that. It's like how many people do you need to change a light bulb kind of a scenario out there. Uh, Diverse engagement models, like I said, again, uh, all the way from TNM up to now disruptive uh, outcome-based pricing models. Uh, a lot of process orientation, and, and, and this is the process orientation that I see being disrupted to a very large extent. Uh, a lot of people come back and say, we do Agile, and uh, uh, you question them a little more, and you ask them, so what do you do in Agile, and then uh, uh, do you have a process? Yeah, we, we, we have a process which describes Agile. So how do you do Agile? Uh, well, we have one month sprints. Uh, okay, so how do you do your one month sprints? Oh, we have one week of requirements, one week of design, one week of development, one week of test, okay? Now, this is essentially to me waterfall within a one month cycle. Uh, and uh, unfortunately, uh, Agile, the way it had been quote unquote uh, theorized, uh, in practice, given the way we as service providers deliver our service to our end customers, uh, is a completely uh, a different animal, okay? Uh, but 
Uh, again, uh, let me raise my hands. This is not to say that it is not being done. It, people have implemented it successfully also. Uh, people have uh, worked towards co-location and improved the way service delivery actually happens to make sure that agile testing, etc., integrate. Uh, let's look on the other side of what our clients want, okay? Uh, what I call the skin in the game. Uh, it can mean different things. It can mean the way you are now hooked to your clients or your clients want you to, uh, to, to, you know, to respond to and, and potentially take risk in whether their business is successful or not. I look at it slightly differently from a capability perspective. Uh, I see clients uh, wanting people to understand their business a lot more. Uh, let me give you an example. Uh, I went to a retailer last year in, in the US uh, and the one thing that they did there was to make sure that everybody in that organization wore those retailers' clothes, okay? So there was no member of the organization that didn't wear those clothes. It was like a uniform. You could wear t-shirts, you could wear shorts, you could wear sweatshirts, you could wear sneakers, you could do whatever you want. But you walked into that organization, all you saw was the retailer's clothes. What it meant was that they were encouraging their employees to, and, and there were discounts offered to employees, but it was not like, you know, I will give you this sweatshirt on your desk. No, you go out there, you buy it, you flash your card, you get some discount, etc. So what they wanted was for everybody in the organization to experience actually how their business functioned. Okay, so what they did by that was get every employee to have their skin in that game. They understood the entire, they, they understood what the retailer was doing, they understood the business of the retailer, and to that extent, uh, they, 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 oh, sorry, I thought I hit it. I'm really sorry about this. Okay, so, so they understood the entire business of the retailer. Now contrast this to, uh, this, was, this is what happened today morning, okay? Uh, and, and it's just like a side side from what I'm trying to tell you, but kind of correlates back to this. I saw this uh, car in front of me when I was driving, and it had this big bold sticker which says, God loves you, okay? Uh, nice, I mean, you know, you look a little closer into one side and there was a doctor symbol out there. Now, uh, uh, the irony of it really struck me, okay? Now, would this be a person that I would go to who, you know, in the interest of because my maker loves me is going to arrange a quicker meeting between me and my maker? Okay. So I was like, okay, now skin in the game has a very different connotation out here. Okay. So, uh, so, so essentially the key thing is that customers want you to feel their pain. Customers want you to understand their business and customers want you to now take ownership for how their business moves ahead. What they want is obviously execution excellence. Nowadays in the world that we're living in, uh, you can plug out a service provider, plug in another service provider, and people are willing to take that risk with a small blip in their uh, you know, potential targets and still think that the service can be delivered to the levels that they were before. Customers expect a solution mindset. I have a problem, what is your solution? It's no longer about services. It's no longer about, I have a testing service which is about setting up a test factory. That's a service delivery issue. Customers potentially don't want to hear that. What they want is, is what you're telling me going to solve my problem? Is it going to help me or my business work better? And what is that solution that you are offering me? What they want is, again, innovation and in service delivery, pricing, et cetera, where they will push you to deliver test as a service, bug, paper bug, crowdsourcing, and all of those kind of things. Lastly, I think what they really want is you to be ahead of the knowledge curve. Why do customers value you? Now, this is where the question of the value that you will generate to the customer really comes in. In terms of saying, I understand your business, I know what are the potential roadblocks and hindrances in your business. I can potentially test and make sure that your business will survive. That is what customers want to understand. And I know where your business is headed so that I, as an organization, can make sure that I am prepared to take the next leap with you. So, for example, uh, one, one of the talks that came across last year, and I think it was... Uh, 
uh, Kiran from Infosys, if I remember the name. Uh, he gave a talk on, on mobile banking. And I think uh, the way that was, uh, that was pictured and the way that was projected uh, was a completely business-focused enterprise around how testing for mobiles in the banking space would really work for the benefit of that customer. Now, that is value that the customer actually sees. Uh, transparency in transactions, obviously, the better you are, the more honest you are. Uh, customers value that integrity. In terms of going forward, like I said, delivering value to the business, customers want to see value. My experience has been customers will not shirk paying value if they believe what they are getting is not a commodity service. If you are saying that the only thing that I can do is really optimize only on my delivery, you're just playing a price point. You're playing a $10 versus a $15, and that's about it. Your capability stays at one level, which means that you could take organization A, plug in organization B, and you'd still be the same. And that leads us to the next point about you yourself being a commodity service. In, in terms of testers, I see that capability also stagnating at a particular level. Very interestingly, when, I, when, I, when, when we did some learning sessions and we worked with a lot of large and medium organizations, uh, I, I asked a bunch of people, and this was a set of people who were, you know, a position to be test leads. Uh, did they make testing as a career? And they were like, hands up. And this is consistent, okay? Hands up on all those occasions. Uh, how many books on testing that they read post-college? There were about three. How many websites on testing did they follow? It came down to probably one. What it essentially means is that individuals themselves are falling into the trap of being commodities. That means you can take your service, you can take your learning, you are then only playing price points. You put your hand out here, you get offers that are 10% more. You put your hand out here, you'll get offers that are 10% less. And individuals are unfortunately falling into that trap themselves. Uh, obviously, speed of change, the need for individuals to evolve, be it in the way service is delivered, be it in the way the domain is understood, be it in the way new technology is now coming up, and what they need to do in terms of keeping up with their skills is, is also paramount out here. Lack of innovation crucibles. And I think we sometimes, uh, as leaders in organizations, are much to blame for that. Uh, we are happy with getting a service delivered. And that, that is the difference that I see. If we need to transform capability, we need to change our mindset from being leaders as opposed to being managers. As a manager, I'm sure everybody delivers an excellent job, okay? You have great CSATs, you have excellent uh, uh, profitability, uh, you have excellent quality indices, et cetera, et cetera. What we don't do is measure people on the basis of what is the next leap that you have taken? What is the next leap that your team has now taken? Are you still in that same being able to deliver that service as opposed to making people better in terms of how they can now test or they can take on future roles or they can now start innovating to actually create solutions or test solutions for their customers in a much better way. People skills, behavior, growth. Again, I think a lot to do with the way we manage people, the way we want them to be, we mold them in certain ways, we stagnate them in certain ways, and people then start to look at these as, you know, if the organization doesn't do this for me, and I, I, sometimes I think it's a, it, it, it's, it's a lot to do with our attitude. I expect training to be given to me. Well, does an organization manage your career all the time? No. Who takes control of that? You. How do you manage your career? I mean, up to now, 22 years of your life, nobody managed your life for you. Or maybe your parents did, but uh, you know. Uh, you, you, you probably landed up where you are on the strength of what you studied, what you chose to become. And now that you have chosen a certain career path, 
how do you make sure that your behavioral traits, your growth continue in that direction? So the ability to say that now I am a leader, maybe it's natural, but if I don't aim for that leadership role, I will never get there. I am happy to be in the rut. And unfortunately, you know, I, I always do this by the 80-20 rule, okay? Uh, I think that applies to everything in, in general. Uh, and to me, 20% of the organization works ahead, walks ahead, pulls the rest of the 80% along with them. Uh, may be true, may not be true, but I, I am a very strong believer of that, which is why when you see business value of testing, I'm sure there are about 20% of the projects that are being delivered to end outcomes, the balance coming out in, in potentially, you know, through TNM or fixed price contracts. What do we need to do differently? I think, and this I believe comes from every one of us. I think we need to wear two hats. We need to wear a strategic hat, in which case you are trying to look at what is it that I see either for myself or for my organization going forward. What, and, and then there is the transactional hat where you manage people, okay? Uh, so unfortunately, we can get caught in that trap of managing people, managing leads, which is why the core, you know, the term team lead becomes extremely important to the guy below you because that's the trait he's been exhibited to. I mean, that's the trait he's been shown. If I am a team lead of this level, of this rank, and that's what I want in my appraisal, nothing else. I don't care whether I've done a great job. I've put in my five years. I want that stamp. People need to be ready to inspire, to motivate. It's not an easy path to go down. Taking testing, and I'm sure that there is a lot of learning that each of y'all have out here uh, in terms of service delivery models, in terms of automation models, in terms of pricing models, some of which you will apply, some of which you may not, but you would then choose what you will need to apply and then take your organization, your team, and yourself up to the next level. Again, disrupt to innovate. Uh, it's easy to do the same thing over and over again. As a tester, yes. As a lead, yes. My question then, in terms of all of this, is do you have it in you to challenge the status quo? Do you have it in you to set yourself innovation goals in the work that you're doing rather than just improvement goals? And here I mean, I have set myself a CSAT of 4.2 to 4.3 or 4.5 or whatever. That's an improvement goal to me, okay? But I have taken my team up to the next level of customer confidence. That is a difference. That means the customer believes that this test team is the best that he's ever got. There can be no better uh, team that he can get which can add value in terms of of, of their domain expertise, in terms of the techno technical expertise, in terms of the coverage that you come out with. And they are advising me as opposed to telling me, you know, this is what I have done, and me telling them. And unfortunately, most of our engagements are that way. My customer didn't tell me this. Okay, so I don't think I need to do it. But do you think you need to go back and tell your customer something? Uh, yeah, but then, you know, you don't get those opportunities. Well. The opportunities are for you to create if you need to make that next leap. Again, I say set capability enhancement goals. It's easy to gain, you know, pockets of skills. It's easy to say he's a specialized performance tester, he's a specialized security tester, etc. But as a whole, have you gone up in terms of the excellence that you have? Excellence can be measured in any dimension that you think. I, I, I don't think there are any standards, nor do I think you need to look out for standards. You need to say, this is a level of excellence that I have within the team. What do I need here? And measure it in whatever way you think is best. So I will leave you with these final thoughts. I'm not going to go out there and explain it. I think this is down to 45 seconds. But uh, anyway, uh, I think what we really need to look at are leaders. Don't get transactional think strategy also, and I know that is going to be tough. It is extremely tough trying to say, this is the strategic roadmap that I need to go on while you're attending 10 customer calls in the day two, okay? It's, it's not easy, but you just, if you are the leader, you just need to find the time to do that. And the thing that I would really, really 
encourage you to do. And I have seen this because uh, uh, in all of our uh, uh, interactions with a variety of people that we've seen, is that the leader as a motivator, the leader as a mentor, comes far low in the value chain. Comes extremely low. So when I talk to testers, I say that I can't go and talk to my boss. Since why? Because it might look bad, it might look uh, negative, it might look, uh, you know, that I am not doing my job. And uh, unfortunately, therein lies the nub between what leaders should do versus what is expected of them. All right. Okay. Uh, so thanks and happy to take any questions. Questions can start from the back benches forward. Yeah, please, ma'am. Yeah. Uh, good afternoon, Divaka. My name is uh, Shrikala, yeah. and I'm from Bosch. So this is my second question for the day. But uh, uh, see, from what you said, uh, as is an in I'm currently the test manager of an independent uh, testing team. So we cater to different types of internal customers within Bosch. And Bosch is a legacy organization, right? So uh, as much as we're given the freedom to innovate, uh, it is always within a box. So there is a framework, and especially because it is that old and that successful, uh, if you will have to put forward an innovative idea, you will really have to fight a big battle. Because they say, oh, you know what, no, we, we, we've lived this long, we've done this successfully for so long, so it will run, don't worry. So can you shed some light on how do you think you could come over this particular barrier? Well, uh, sorry, okay. Uh, one thing to do with fighting those battles, okay? It's not an easy path. Nothing on this happens overnight. Let me be very clear about that too, okay? But if you have a vision, if you think that this is what I want to do, you will find the supporters that you have who will then support you or champion your cause and then take you up to the next level. I think there are two things that you need to do, and this is what probably management textbooks also tell you, but find your supporters. Find the champions who you think you can resonate this idea with, people who will buy into it, and then people who say, yes, I think this is a good thing to do if we can show these kind of benefits. I have yet to see anybody who has said that when you articulate benefits and when those benefits are visible, palpable, it's, it's not like wishful thinking, okay? You say that, yeah, I can increase morale, okay? I mean, that's a very different way of saying I can improve this by X factor. That is what makes it more palpable. And in my books, I think if you can set those down, that would probably make the first step in the battles. And it's not going to be an easy road. Okay? Thank you. Uh, I, I was talking, sorry, I was talking to, uh, uh, you know, one of the person, gentlemen that I meet on my morning walks, and I actually started doing that very regularly, okay? But, uh, and that's... Uh, but, you can see uh, the he, effects already. <laughs> <laughs> no, no. But uh, uh, this gentleman, very interestingly, he, he's a, he was an ex-Air Force person. Uh, he's now stepped out. He's a management consultant. And when I was telling him, talking to him about this talk, uh, uh, he gave me examples. He uh, says, uh, you know, leaders, if you want to quote, quote General Patton, quote Mahatma Gandhi. Uh, and, and to me, I'm a very pragmatic guy, okay? Uh, uh, I can't see, uh, yes, it's a good example. It's a brilliant example. Uh, but I really can't see how an audience would correlate and say, yeah, Mahatma Gandhi to tha, but, you know, other than knowing that October 2nd is a dry day, I don't remember anything more about the thing, okay? But uh, unfortunately, what he said was the truth, okay? Those are not easy battles to fight. They require a certain conviction, and they require you to be convinced that you are on the right path. Thank you, Devakar. So what you're saying is the essentially is a strong business case with, with a tangible uh, takeaway for the organization is what's going to get you buy-in at the, the leadership management. And then examples which are larger than life or, you know, that tends to be larger than life. Can we take a question from the back when I come to the gentleman and wind up here? Any? See, even Devakar started saying the backbenchers, can they hear? I'm, I'm really tempted to swap now, Devakar. Bring them all <laughs> onto the front two Bring tables front, which are empty. Right? Yeah, no okay. questions means all of you come to the front. Yeah, there's a prompt hand going up there. Very quick and fast, thank you. Yeah. Uh, when you talk about innovation, and uh, I hear you say like it should be more personal, like we should drive it ourselves. We also want to know from the other side, what is that, uh, you know, individually in your, your stage or in your experience, you try to push 
the member to you know think of getting that. Sorry, what what are the two or three things that? The if you can speak a little louder. The, the innovation. Yeah. Or 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 the personal, uh, the person in person, he should kind of drive it through. So you know everywhere he comes. But on the other side, on the company side, how does he see like you know you can kind of uh, push to have that thought? How can organ? Let me how paraphrase. Can a, how, how can, can organization the organization push that thought down to to the individual uh, level? Uh, you know, culture, if I may call that. Yeah. yeah. Uh, uh, I have uh, an example in terms of, uh, you know, the way you would run probably your appraisals, okay? Uh, I'm sure that a lot of you run appraisals saying that, okay, this person worked on this project, solved two of my crises with the customer, was able to, you know, if I called him, he probably came on promptly, et cetera, right? I mean, a lot of us would put that attitude around that. Now, all that is nice in a very reactive sense. Uh, and, and you have a lot of people who, who are great workers, will respond to you, will, will you know, uh, will, will make that difference between how you deliver, for example. Uh, when you start looking at it from that one perspective, then you're just ticking off his transactional skills to that extent. When you start looking at saying that, okay, I think you are on the right path towards or on the right trajectory of growth, but not just transactional, these are two or three areas that I would like you to focus on. Be it building tools, be it you know, looking at customer solutions, be it in the domain, be it uh, uh, you know, in the way they come out with different pricing models. Uh, I, think, I think that is what is important. Maybe what you need to do is set yourself five high level, you know, what they call the big, hairy, ambitious goals in, in typical parlance, and say how or who will go up there to achieve those for you. And, and then measure people on how do they do against that. And uh, you know, you may, not, uh, you may not want to tick them off completely, but then that's a way that you can inculcate certain different traits into them. About capabilities enhancements. Uh, well, though every organization realizes that uh, people are the greatest asset, uh, but the business dynamics in the recent past have been such that uh, you train people, you build up people, and then uh, you send them for trainings and all, but at some point of time when the business, need, business needs are there, that takes a step back. So during the current economic scenario also and going forward, what do you think the concrete steps can be taken, particularly on capabilities enhancements? Okay. Uh, so I think... Uh, a really uh, short one, Devata. Really sorry, know. yeah, I give, it, give me a quick moment, okay? Uh, I think uh, downturns are when you can really take stock of what you really need. Okay, to be very honest. Uh, that's when you really look at your skills and say, oh, you know what, I'm really missing A, B, and C skills. Uh, it could be either in leadership, it could be in domain, it could be in technology, it could be in whatever. And uh, uh, this is the time that you might want to spend investing in, uh, and, and it doesn't mean like mass investments, okay? People generally talk about training and they say, I want to train 200, 500 people. It's not that. You know, it doesn't need to be 200, it doesn't need to be 500, but it needs to be those core 10 or 20 that you can really focus your attention on, that you think will take you up to the next level. We can discuss this later. I have... Uh, thank you, thank you, Devakar. And a